Hey everybody, welcome to Handy Quilters Watch and Learn. I'm Kim Sandberg and with me today is Amy Bosey. We're both studio educators here at Handy Quilter. So today we've got a really fun topic to talk about, denim quilts. I think that this is something that a lot of people do along the way. So let's talk about it a little bit. First question, why do we make denim quilts? Sometimes it's the fabric you have on hand. Exactly. Also, what we use them for, we, mm -hmm. we love to use them for camping, mm -hmm. for picnic quilts. Yeah, definitely. I think of them as like car trunk quilts too. Definitely. They're those, those great, because denim is such a good sturdy fabric that just lasts for forever. It's totally there. Yes. And like you said, fabric that we have on hand, I mean, come on. Who doesn't have some old pairs of jeans kicking around, right? That you like <laughs> save for a project. So why not make them into a quilt, right? Yes, definitely. I know my very first quilt, that's why I mm -hmm. chose a denim quilt, because I had a whole bunch of jeans that my girls had uh, had outgrown, and some of them were pretty worn, so yeah. I couldn't pass them down to yeah. my other younger girls. So that's what I used. Exactly, exactly. I know I have a quilt here that actually is, I made my senior year of high school that was from all the jeans that I'd worn out like through junior high and high school. And like you said, they'd, you know, the, the rear ends and the knees were gone, but there was still some usable fabric there. So I figured I would use it. Okay, so that answers kind of the first question. Now, if we're getting that fabric and it's not just something that we're buying off the bolt, which of course you can always do with denim too. It's actually available pretty much in any fabric store, um, especially ones that carry apparel fabric yes. because it's usually considered an apparel fabric. Although I have actually found it in stores that carry upholstery fabric also, mm -hmm. which is really great. Then it's even a heavier, uh, heavier denim. Um, so how do we prepare that fabric? Because this is not just laying out yardage and cutting it. No. So you want to think about what you want in your quilt okay. and what you want to leave out. And you want to think about how you're going to be piecing it, how mm -hmm you're gonna be quilting it. Yeah. Cause that's gonna determine if you're going to be leaving things in like pockets um, yes. and how you piece it. Exactly, exactly. So. so so that being said, let's take a second and we've actually got an old pair of jeans that Amy's gonna show you how she deconstructs it to use it in a quilt. So let's have Amy step over here and we'll take a look at how she does this. So this pair of jeans was generously donated to us from somebody. And we're grateful. Yeah. Um, so what I look at when I look at a pair of jeans is I look at the amount of fabric that I can get from that pair. This pair, I can obviously get a whole lot of fabric from. So the first thing I like to do is I like to cut along the seams mm -hmm. right here. I also like, if I'm going to use the pocket, I'll cut a little further from the pocket. If I'm not, I'll cut as close to that as I can. But um, now, Amy, do you cut those with scissors or do you use a rotary cutter for this part? I start off with scissors because okay. I like to, I don't like to use my rotary cutter to cut through this. You don't like to use the rotary cutter to cut through like the thicker seams? Yes, the thicker okay. seams. So I'll use my scissors to start to de deconstruct. Okay. But for the legs, I will actually use my rotary cutter to cut this right here. Okay, so let me just show us a little bit of that. All right. So you're not actually cutting through that bottom um, hem there. No, I'm going to start right here because I would cut this off with my scissors. Oh, okay. Well, you could you could go ahead and cut that with scissors too. Yeah, and just definitely. give us an idea here of how you're going to cut that. So you'd actually trim off that bottom piece first, mm -hmm. and then you would start cutting with your rotary cutter. Yes. Okay. I think that's really smart because those seams are awful thick to try to get a rotary cutter. They cut. are, and they'll do they'll dull your blade yeah. really fast. For sure. So, and I would do the same over here. Mm -hmm. So I would just line my fabric, you know, pull it over. Yeah. I know it's interesting how uh, the way that those, uh, depending on the jeans, like sometimes the backside or the front side is actually a little bit of a more generous piece than the other side. Yeah. So those seams don't line up perfectly. No, they don't. They don't. And so, that's, and I'm not left-handed, so. <laughs> that's okay. And you don't have to use, sometimes you can just 
is you're not cutting your pieces right now. You're just getting the fabric down. So I would cut that all the way up mm -hmm. and then I would use my scissors around the crotch area mm -hmm. and at the top cut that top off. So you'd also use the the scissors up through mm -hmm. this part of the jeans. Yeah, I would actually just cut just right around. So and you're going to cut through both layers at the same time. Oh, you just missed. So you start. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here, I'll scoot over a little bit so she can see it. Okay. So you, you start that? cutting and then you just go to the one layer and mm -hmm. then go all the way through. So that's the easiest. And I don't use this on uh -huh. my quilts up here. Like the yoke parts? No. All the double seamed parts? No. Some people okay. might want to. I don't. Mm -hmm. um, I don't. I'll, I'll use pockets if they're my kids' cute pockets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if they were like my husband's jeans, I'm like, no, we don't need his big pockets. You, we don't need a pocket that big <laughs> unless you're using a really big patch size. Okay, so that's good to know. So really you're... Um, it sounds like your main tips for deconstructing a pair of jeans is just making sure that you avoid those heavy seams, remove all of those first, and then leave over that uh, usable fabric. Yes. Um, I know for me, depending on the size of the jeans, usually determines what my uh, block size is going to be. If I'm using lots of little kid jeans, it's going to be smaller blocks. If I'm using, for example, my husband's jeans, they're going to be a little bigger. <laughs> so, yeah. Totally know how that rolls. I know when I made this quilt, mm -hmm. so it was my very first quilt okay. I ever pieced. Um, Such I had quilt. cute little pockets left yeah. over. Well, and you even included, like you said, you included some cute pockets. You yes, got I did. This cute pocket here with um, your little kid stuff. But I see something here that let's talk about this for a second. So this is a little rivet that is still in the jeans there. So what do we do with these? Because that plus a long arm, not so great. <laughs> so if I were to quilt this quilt, mm -hmm. I don't know if I would have left that in. Okay. Just because I don't like quilting over this yeah, this really isn't seams. bad, but some of the some of the seams can get really heavy with pockets. Mm -hmm. This will break your needle. It mm -hmm. can throw your machine out of timing. Mm -hmm. I've done that on memory quilts. I've thrown my machine out of timing hitting. Mm -hmm sequence and yeah those ugly things like that. they're not awesome are they so if if I wouldn't do an edge to edge with pro stitcher okay. with this okay I would do free motion mm -hmm. or I would do some quilting in each individual block like ah uh, gotcha okay okay but so so really the thing to know is just if you are including pockets with the rivets or whatever uh you're just going to want to avoid those while you're actually yes. quilting. Yes, be aware they're there. So why don't you show us what you've done here with the cute little pocket. You uh, mentioned that you cut the pockets off your girls' jeans, which, yeah, mm -hmm. lots of those are really cute, especially <laughs> from little girls' jeans. So this is a really fun. You actually made a little purse. Look at this. Look at how cute this is. Cute little double-sided purse using the two. Um the two pockets together. So that's a really fun idea that you can yes. do with those pockets. So you're it not just throwing simple. away all that, that good usable fabric. Oh yes. It was so. very, very easy to do. Okay. So let's talk about some of the other things you want to consider while you're piecing one of these quilts. So on this quilt here, you actually pieced with your corners all matching up here, but, but you tied this quilt. This is your yes. pre, pre long arming days. <laughs> um, is this something you'd actually recommend while you're for long arm quilting? No, no. Okay. So you'd actually recommend doing something more like, um, sorry, we'll move my other quilts over here. I actually offset these ones. You can see here that my corners don't match up. Now, this is an older quilt that I made huh, many, many minutes ago. And uh, it's actually tied, but I offset those seams so that there's not four match up in the corner. So that's what so you're that's talking good. about, yes. right? Yes. Okay. So this wouldn't be bad to quilt. No. Other than the pockets. Other than all the pockets that are on here. I actually did a lot of pockets on here. I did an entire row of pockets down the middle because, you know, <laughs> that's what you do when you don't know what you're doing. Um, it does make it look really cool though. Okay, so let's talk about some of the other things to consider while you are thinking about quilting denim. So what kind of thread would you recommend? So really any thread that is a good 
a good quality thread. Okay. So on this particular quilt, I mm -hmm. would quilt with Magnifico, I'd quilt with So Fine, I'd quilt with Omni or King Tut. Okay, so you're talking so, like a 40 or a 50 weight thread. Yes, I would not quilt with Micro Quilter. Okay. And I would not use probably the... Bottom um, line? Well, the, I have bottom line and the... In the bobbin, bobbin. okay. I so, would have... so you wouldn't recommend using something like Monopoly, um, bottom line on both the top and bottom, any of those finer threads, because these are heavier fabrics. We don't want anything popping apart, right? Yes. Is what you're yes. saying. Um, now, that being said, let's talk about the needle. First of all, you always match your needle to your thread size. So you'd go with that. But what if you find maybe it's struggling a little, you're having some problems with shredding from the heavier fabric, what would you recommend? I would go a size up. Okay. I never have a problem going a size up yeah. with any quilting. Me either, me either. So if you find that you normally quilt with like a, say a size 18 with a good 40 weight thread, you might wanna go up to a 19 on a denim quilt, especially if you have a heavier uh, fabric on the back too, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Okay, Yes. that's good. So let's talk about batting. What kind of batting do you recommend for these kind of quilts? A lighter ba batting. Lighter so batting? So like the 80-20 is perfect. Okay. Because it's breathable and it's not heavy because mm -hmm. jeans are oh, heavy. They're gosh. super heavy. These quilts weigh a ton. <laughs> Amy, Amy, you should have seen her walking in carrying all these quilts. It's like she's doing some heavy lifting today. So yeah, I totally agree. I think those... Uh, thinner bats. I even think a bamboo would be really great oh, with this. Yeah. Something yeah. that is just on the thinner side would be, mm -hmm. would be really great with it. Um, so let's, let's do talk about the type of backings you would recommend for these type of quilts. So I wouldn't put like a heavy backing, like a, a, a thick minky, or I like to buy those blankets you get at mm. like Costco or Sam's Club mm -hmm. and use those for my backing. I wouldn't okay. do that with a jean quilt. Oh, okay. Um, just because it does make the quilt heavier. Mm -hmm. um, I like to use flannel. Oh, um, yeah, flannel's great. That's really durable. Mm -hmm. um, cotton is durable. It is. Um, yeah. So really, just so you would just want to recommend something heavier. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk, though, for a second about using denim as a backing on a quilt. So for example, the quilt that's behind us here, um, this is my camping quilt that I made. Oh, actually, it's been six, seven years ago. Um, this is actually a pattern from uh, Bee in My Bonnet, Lori Holt. It's called Vintage Camping. And I wanted this to stand up well for using it with camping and stuff. So I actually did denim on the back of this. And this is denim that I bought in Yardage. You guys can see here. It's just got a nice denim on the back. And it's great because I don't have to worry about this wearing out or you know, as it fades, it just turns into that favorite pair of faded blue jeans that we all love. So for backing, denim's actually a pretty great fabric, right? Oh yes, definitely, definitely. It's durable. It's very yeah. durable, so. It, it really is, it really is. So let's move some of these quilts out of the way. And then let's talk about one other type of thing, like thing that you can quilt with denim. So what if I had a denim jacket? We actually have a denim jacket here, and this, this is something that we have been kicking around in the studio here that we wanna work on. This is a denim jacket. Um, we want to do some quilting on the back of it. Would you recommend something like that? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. So actually taking a piece of clothing and doing some quilting on the back of it, um, there's actually plenty of room. This is a pretty generous size piece of clothing. We might even be able to do some on the front. And this is a lined light jacket. We could totally do some quilting on this, right? Oh yes, definitely. So I'm thinking future episode right yes. here. We can, Amy and I can do some playing around with that. We can, and we'll figure out ways to attach it to the leaders. Yes. And <laughs> Christina and oh, I, can't, I think it was Johnny actually did an episode talking about a watch and learn episode talking about attaching kind of odd shaped things to leaders. We can use some of those tips and uh, do some quilting on that. So stay, uh, keep your eyes out for an episode coming up soon with something like that. So we actually have a denim quilt that you just recently finished, as in like last weekend. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, loaded here on the frame and it's really cute. So let's talk about this for a second and then we're gonna actually do some quilting on this, right? Yes. Okay, so tell me about this quilt. Um, the types of fabric she used in it and why you chose to lay it out the way you did. All right, so a friend of mine brought me 
several, um, a bag full of jeans mm -hmm. from her kids. And her kids are little, like they're tiny. Okay. And so the size that I chose to cut these was determined by the size of the jeans. So that's why you did like these narrower. Yes. They're, they're almost like bricks. So what size of blocks are these? Do you know what? They all, they aren't the same. Oh, gotcha. Okay. <laughs> None of them are the same. Um, I want to say they're probably about three and a half inches wide mm -hmm. and the length varies. So it looks like they're anywhere from maybe four to six, eight inches, mm -hmm. somewhere in there. Okay. Yes. So I see you just use the fabric that's available. I just used the fabric that was available. Okay. And she also gave me like four different prints of these flannel. different fabrics and they're some of them like feel like they're kind of flannel but mm -hmm. they're not. They're like different. They're like knits. Oh, wow. So, okay. So that's that's a little fun challenge thrown in there too, right? <laughs> it, it was. It was. But it added some color mm -hmm. to the quilt um, and it, it allowed me to make it bigger because mm -hmm. she wants this to be a picnic quilt. Okay. And that's what she plans on using it. Awesome. And then I just purchased some flannel for mm -hmm. the backing. Okay. And so I staggered it brick style just because I do mm -hmm. want to do all over quilting with it. Okay. And I plan on I planned on using the Pro Stitcher because mm -hmm. she has a particular design she wants to use. Okay. So that's why I pieced it the way I did. Okay, very cool. So this is a really fun layout and you have specifically have all of your bricks running this way and then you've got an edge to edge design that's going to run across the quilt this yes. way. Um, and I've noticed that you have offset all of these seams so that you'll you avoid having four pieces of this heavier fabric yes. coming together in one place. Yes. Very, uh, very thoughtful. Even though it looks like a super easy quilt to piece, there's definitely some thought that went into this for sure. There were some places where when I was piecing it, mm -hmm. like um, sewing the strips together, where they would come together, where I knew they were coming together. And so I would just cut <laughs> Cut, cut the little extra out. <laughs> yes, and then re-sew those two together. I love and it. then So the seams wouldn't meet up. That's very smart. So a lot of thought really did go into the piecing <laughs> of this quilt. I think that that's so great. Okay, so let's talk about um, the the foot that you would recommend using on the machine with this type of quilting. So because you may have thicker seams or um, on, on a denim quilt, if you have items like pockets or anything, I would use something like the glide foot because okay. it will go it would go right over it. Mm -hmm. Also edge to edge, I love to use the glide foot Me too. for edge to edge just because I don't have to worry. Mm -hmm. Like I would with the ruler foot. Yeah, or... definitely. Catching, catching, especially some of these heavier seams. Sometimes mm -hmm. the um, the fabric can actually get pushed around a little bit. Yes. Um, if you're using, especially one of the metal feet, yes. for sure. Okay, so let's talk about the design you picked, or I guess so, actually your friend picked. So with when I pick a design, I look at the piecing. Mm -hmm. I look at things that are in the quilt like in the fabric this really doesn't have any designs mm -mm. and with lines, a, lines. lots <laughs> straight of straight lines. lines with a quilt that is more square or more you know block mm -hmm. like blocky i like to use more circular designs mm -hmm. but um my friend found this design she really likes and i think it would complement this i agree quilt very well mm -hmm. um it is from quiltable and it's called wide rule with arrow and it was actually designed by kathy zimmerman mm -hmm. who works for handy quilter yeah she does yep. so it's a really cool design too as you can see here on the screen amy has that set up it looks like you offset it a little bit i did i actually offset it more mm -hmm. than when you go when you do put a design into pro stitcher and you do the repeat and you do the wrap you can offset a row but mm -hmm. i actually hit that arrow quite a bit more so it's not just offset it so it's to where it was how i liked it i like i like how it kind of creates those yes. uh, lines across it it's very yes. cool all right, well, let's see this stitching in action i want to see how the machine handles this of course our machines are super tough heavy duty and they can handle these fabrics all right amy so let's go ahead and let's stitch a couple rows and see how this does all right
That thread blends really well. It, We're not it seeing does. it so much, but trust us, it's there. You can actually see on the Pro Stitcher screen as it's uh, stitching out that first row. And we'll zoom in a little bit so it's a little easier to see. Oh, I think that's a really cool design. I like it. This thread for you. Should we stitch out one more row? Yeah. So we can get a little bit of a better picture of how this is going to look. All right. And this is where teamwork quilting comes in. Let you grab that other end and take that back. Stitch out one more. Quilter out a couple rows here. We'll go ahead and clip these threads and then let's take a little bit of a closer look here. So I think like a spot right here like this, you can see this design is quilting out really, really well across there. Oh, yeah. You see it you're and that just quilted right over the top, no problem with that glide foot. That looks so good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I really like that. I think that that is a great. I think that's a really great design. I love the texture it's giving it. The... Yeah. And it's not a super um, fancy design. It's a really great, just simple, simple straight. It's going to put enough quilting in there. It's going to stabilize everything and make this quilt look really great. Yes. So simple. I really, I, I think it looks fantastic. I'll be excited to see this finish. All right, well, thanks for watching today. It's been so much fun to show you uh, denim quilts and just some fun things that you can do about incorporating denim into your next quilting project. Be sure to give us a like, subscribe to our channel, and have fun quilting this week.